facilities for the for Sunday's Ford EcoBoost 400 here at Homestead Miami Speedway. We're joined now by the driver, the number 88 Exalta Chevrolet, Daryl Hart Jr. Dale, uh, heading into the finale weekend. How you feeling? Uh, feel pretty good. Just uh, had a uh, had a pretty decent run last week and um, went over to the property and went home for a day but then went to the property in Key West to work on that renovation project and had some fun sorting things out over there and drove up here last night um, and had a good night's sleep so looking forward to trying to get on the track and get our car handling and see if we can make the thing get around there pretty good so we can have some fun Sunday. This track is um, this track is really one of the uh, one of the more enjoyable tracks for me. I like running the high side everywhere, but we can. And this place begs for it, so it's so much fun trying to put the car on the fence and making speed up there. And it seems like guys are getting better and better at it, so it's a lot more busier and and, and crowded up on the high, high line. But still, it's a fun it's a fun thing to try to accomplish and try to do well and and. I feel like that I've I've always had had a knack for that all throughout my career is finding that groove at a lot of different tracks. So this is uh, and I, I who, where's Bob? So Bob, <laughs> I got a question, man, and I'm because I don't even know the rules anymore. But um, so if I retire and then I want to run the Homestead Xfinity race next year, is that uh, against it? That's legal for me to do, right? Right, so yeah, but my my cup experience, no matter whether I'm retired or not, doesn't doesn't keep me out of being able to run that event because I got two right now, maybe three, and I haven't decided where I'm gonna run them. But I think Homestead would definitely be on the list if it's it's a it's a race I can run because I just like the track so much. Obviously, we enjoy the keys, and um, you know the keys had a difficult. Uh, past several months with Irma and uh, we've got a lot of friends down there that were affected by that and on the drive from uh, <clears throat> on the drive from Key West all the way up here man it's uh, they're still really really struggling a lot of people still displaced a lot of people lost their homes and um, so it's still a very difficult and challenging situation for a lot of people in the middle keys um, but one of the things that I saw that was really, really neat and, and kind of uplifting was not only Key West Old Town, uh, the town itself, they're ready for people to come. They're ready for, uh, it, it's as if they didn't miss a beat. Um, so if everybody's, th you know, think, wondering whether the Keys are open for business, they are. And uh, those people are ready to, to serve you. But also on the drive up here, I mean, every mile there's like a makeshift sign, of plywood with whatever business spray painted on it with big open uh, on the spray painted on there. So those people are resilient and they're they're you know they want they need people to go down there and vacation and and help the economy in that particular area and so. It looks like that um, they're they're working hard to get back on their feet, and uh, so that's really fun to see. Cause we, I've never owned a vacation home before until we went to Key West in '08, and uh, we just love it down there. And it's it was really um, really good to spend a couple of days there and see how everybody's doing. We're going to open it up to questions now. We're going to start right up front here with Jim Utter, and then we'll go to Ryan and Jenna. Get a mic to you right here to Jim. Jim Mutter, motorsport.com. I also noticed driving up Wednesday all the signs that say the um, keys will come back. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Um, this might keep, be kind of a weird question, but I just wondered, coming into this weekend, what, do you, what are you most looking forward to, or are you kind of dreading it? No, I'm not dreading any of it. Um, and I don't know uh, what, I'm, what, what to look forward to. Um, whatever's next, you know, 
I got an opportunity to do an interview here in a minute with Michael Strahan. I'm really looking forward to the chance to chat with him a little bit, um, considering his transition from athlete to um, uh, to behind the microphone in front of the camera. I think that he could give me quite a bit of advice uh, on my next chapter in life. But um, I'm looking forward to taking pictures with Matt later today with our cars. Uh, something that me and him have talked about trying to trying to organize to be able to do for so, some time. I'd, I've known about his paint scheme from since Dover, and uh, he's like, "Man, we should get a picture together." So we're going to try to do that tonight at 7:30, <clears throat> and then we're going to have a picture. Matt is going to have a picture, and I'm going to have a picture with all the people that ha have worked with us in the sport. And I don't know how they organize that. Um, so that's going to be, I'm just in, interested to see how many people show up uh, and who shows up. Um, so that'll be fun. I'm really looking forward to those things. And, and uh, I can't wait to get into the holler to see Greg, um, you know, and my, and my, my get to the car and see T-Mac and Adam and T-Stock and all my guys. Um, and I can't wait to go practice with them, you know, and work and do what we've been doing for all these years. I mean, um, this is a, you know, luck, luck, I like the track and I'm glad we're ending on one that I like. And, and, and so it's, it'll, you know, that enjoyment for racing here will, in, you know, keep me engaged because, you know, that some, I want to enjoy this weekend, but also, you know, we want to end well. We want to be competitive. We want to work today. We want to work tomorrow. We want to put in a good um, effort this weekend. And uh, so that'll be, uh, you know, that'll be fun. That'll be fun to try to figure out. So hopefully we have a competitive car. So I'm looking forward to getting to work on it. We're going to go to Ryan, then Jenna, then Bob. Uh, Ryan McGee, ESPN. Dale, I, you mentioned your guys. I talked to some of them last week. A lot of those guys played college football and had to move on to something else. Yeah. You know, has, have you leaned on those guys a little bit with that transition, or you think you will this weekend? Uh, you know, it's it's relationships that last for a long time, and so um, you know, anytime I need to get their ear, I I can just they're just we're all in a group chat, so I can just reach out and uh, we we all communicate quite often. Um, the, uh, the, you know, the road team, we've had the same guys for a while and, uh, I, I, that's, you see some, some turnover in other teams, but, uh, I really, you know, I really can't speak on that because I don't know, but with our guys, we've had the same group for quite a while. Covey's been with me for I don't know how many years as a jack man and so forth. So, um, I've liked the fact that I've had the same guys because we build these friendships, you know, that are that are more important than pit stops. And uh, they've been great, you know, as far as how they performed. And, and we've had some really good days. Everybody has their bad days. I do too. But, uh, you know, they, they, they've been reliable, um, fun, good guys, good attitude, good personalities. So those friendships will last a long time. And We'll lean on each other for everything, you know, like you know, like we have. We'll go to Jenna. Jennifer Avi, um, not really so sentimental, but Martin's got a really big opportunity. You go a long ways back with Martin. You won championships with you. What would it mean for you to see Martin finally take this next step? Uh, he's the guy. That he's I'm Team Martin for this weekend for sure. Um, me and Brad are great friends, and uh, I love to see Brad do well. But um, with what Martin, you know, just as a driver with what he's been through, what a, you know, it'd just be awesome to see him uh, put his name on that trophy. And we all know about the, what Sherry's dealt with and, and how difficult that's been on her and Martin. Um, and how dedicated he's been to her and um, Martin's, you know,
Martin's just a uh, great guy. I don't have zero ego. Um, love spending time with him when we go hunting together. Well, you haven't had a chance to do much of that this year because he's been so busy winning races and being a championship contender. But, um, you know, we just have a lot of great memories together. Uh, he slept on the couch when he first come down here. And then I uh, let him stay in one of the bedrooms in the house for a couple, several months. And then he moved into a house about 100 yards away on the inside the gate and lived with a buddy of mine. Um, and then him and Sherry got close and they moved in together and um, but he you know we just always been friends and I've always uh, I think that it's really you know drivers we all have I said this like for, seems like I've said it every week drivers have such big egos all of us do but Martin's not on that list I mean he just doesn't he doesn't, you know, abuse the opportunity and, the, and, and what the sports provided him. And I just think that it says so much about his character as a, as a, as a person and a man. I mean, just it's, um, it's really cool to, to, to know people like that and have people like that in your life. And he's a great example to follow. Um, he's impacted my life and, and in a positive way with his uh, with his character and uh, but I, I just I don't know how you put into words what it would mean for him to win I, I don't know how you describe what that means it's bigger than words I guess um, it'd be very popular amongst his peers and amongst the garage and the industry for sure uh, because everybody knows how the kind of person he is and I think you know that whole team sort of has that has that uh, reputation Cole is uh, Cole and Martin sort of go hand in hand you know with their attitudes and personalities and they just blue collar to get to work and they they're, they're no no BS and they don't talk loud and they just win races so um, very uh, very easy to pull for them. We're going to go to Bob, and then we're going to come over to this side of the room to George. Uh, Bob Pockers, ESPN. Uh, beyond wanting to win, what is the one thing you want to do either when you're in the car or outside of the car on Sunday? Uh, well, in the car, I just want to run all the laps. I want to finish the race in one piece. <clears throat> and uh, I don't have anything outside the car that, you know, that's that's on a to-do list you know it just you know as far as my you know as far as i'm concerned i'm good with coming in here and doing the things we always do every race weekend um i want to get it documented i guess that would be good to, to have uh so we have uh we have someone here taking pictures and we we i'm gathering have been gathering a lot of footage over the last several months for a possible documentary Depends on how good all that is, um, and uh, so we're gathering. You know, we're sort of documenting it, which is going to be fun. I might run that visor cam again. I just have to see how my field of vision is when I'm out there practicing with it. So I'll have that footage, and uh, to 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 put you know to pocket and have forever. But as far as um, I'd like to finish the race and finish it in one piece. Just be able to, you know, wherever that is. Obviously, you want to do as well as you can, but no matter where we finish, just be able to pull down pit road, stop the car, and get out. Um, and then, you know, see my guys and do all that. Uh, hopefully, it does. You know, it, it'd be a bit of a heartbreaker if we were have have to have any kind of issue that would take us out of the event, not be able to finish. We're going to go over here to the left to George, and then we'll go to Claire. Yeah, Dale. Uh, George Diaz, Orlando Sentinel. Since you made the decision to walk away, has it been no regrets, or has there been a touch of, oops, you know, maybe 
maybe I need to reconsider. Oh, no, I don't need to reconsider. This is um, great timing for me. It's time for somebody else to get in that car and get out of it what they can. And, um, you know, with Alex coming in behind, it's just a great opportunity for him. It's now, it's, it's his time. It's, it's now, you know, his moment uh, going into next season to, to take his career wherever he can go. And mine had, mine from in my heart has ran its course, you know. And I've always I've, I've felt um, very good about that decision before the race uh, at Daytona started in February, you know that this was it. And I was happy. Uh, I was more thankful to be able to compete this year than I was to ever question whether I should go farther. You know, I, with everything we've been through, with the concussion and trying to come back, uh, it, the mo the emotion was, man, I'm so glad I get to run this last year. It was never, and it was always, this is the last year, and I'm glad I get to run it. And when I started in Daytona, I didn't know whether I would finish it. You know, feeling delicate, feeling compromised, knowing how easily that that could happen again. Um, I confided in my um, friends and family and my wife that I was, you know, worried that I might, uh, you know, that I could get another concussion and, and how disappointing that would be. So I'm sitting here uh, healthy and I'm going to run this last race and I got all the way through the year. Um, so I feel blessed. I feel really good with it. We're going to go to Claire, and then we'll come up here to Kenny. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Where's she at? You know, all of the attention that you've been getting over here, all the attention you've been getting from your sponsors, celebrities, videos, that sort of thing. I mean, when the Budweiser video hit, it was like <laughs> tears. I, I mean, yeah, even if you try good. not to be an emotional. Did any of that really touch you, and how did you watch some of that? Did the Budweiser one get you? Oh, yeah. I mean, all of them do. I mean, you just don't expect stuff like that, and you don't. You know, you're not used to, you know, I don't, I, you just don't expect, a, you, you don't ever assume or, but yeah, they were all very um, emotional. Amy, uh, you know, Amy has to, uh, Amy's the one that's, you know, obviously the most emotional with being pregnant and everything, so they've really been hitting her, but um, <laughs> the Budweiser one was great. I mean, the, w there's so many fond memories uh, of those years and they did such a great job of uh, of shaping that and so um, but it's been really neat to to see some of some of the, the I, th I think I know that a lot of people went to great efforts to, to capture those videos and to make those videos, and that is probably what I appreciate the most, is that um, not only the people that are in in front of the camera, but the but the effort that that it takes to go get capture that content uh, probably means the most, because that you know that there's a lot of people were doing a lot of things, and I've seen stuff day in and day out, and it's just crazy. That some you know that <clears throat> that there's you know that I don't know it's just really overwhelming. So it makes your heart full, and it's really hard for me. It, I'm having a hard time, you know, really trying to put my emotions and thoughts into words. Usually, I'm pretty decent at it, but it uh you know that part of it you never forget. You'll never forget. When somebody tells you how much they appreciate you, it just that's you know that means the world to you, you know to hear that. So this is good. We're going to come right up front here to Kenny, then we're going to go to Joseph. Bruce with NASCAR.com. Dale, first couple of things. You, you mentioned the injury earlier. Was there a point this season that you weren't concerned about that? That it was like okay, I'm good, I can race and not have to worry about it. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's there's days when you don't think about it. And there's days um, when it, you know, you just don't, you're not reminded of it. Um, and so, yeah, there's, 
big, you know, there's chunks of time when you go through race weekend and you don't even think about it. Um, but there's tracks where you've had concussions before and you can't not think about think about it then when you go. Any kind of memory you have at a racetrack comes up at some point in the weekend, whether it's a wind that you had or a crash or you know, a near miss. or um, So you think about every memory when you go to all these places. Like here this weekend, I've already thought about everything that I've ever done at this racetrack by the time I've been here in just 24 hours. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's, um, that's, that's going to be that's going to be there at every race weekend. So, um, uh, so sometimes it was in the way, sometimes it wasn't, you know. And one other thing, when, with everything that you've had to do additionally this year with the appreciation tour and all that, has that been a drain on you? And do you think that's affected you competitively any at all? No, nothing's affected me competitively from, from the, uh, the appreciation tour and and you know it hasn't taken time away or focus away from what we do and how we we just um, you know I've I've you know with Tyler and Tiff and and our team I mean we I've got the best you know people uh, to to navigate all this. And it's been seamless, you know. It's been real simple, real easy, and I'm also going into a lot of these things knowing about the, um, uh, you know, just knowing the the, the conversation you're going to have with the media every week. It's it's been great, you know. This has been a good experience, and um, I don't think that it, you know, the performance for me has been. We just had a down year as a group and um, we've you know we've struggled as a manufacturer f f uh, you know there's a light at the end of the tunnel next year with that Camaro I wish I could have got the you know got the Camaro a couple years ago but uh, I think that um, you know there's better days ahead for Chevrolet and HMS for sure um, it's just been a difficult year I think across the board for for all of us in the last several weeks, we've improved, but still, those aren't the standards that we hold ourselves to. You know, those sevenths and tenths and stuff like that. That's just, you know, that's just enough to get you by. And and uh, we expected more out of ourselves this year. And we started the year pretty good, but uh, definitely had some odd things happening uh, with our cars and and myself. But uh, yeah, I think that the uh, tour has been very positive. We're going to go to the far right to Joseph, then to this young lady here, and then to Reed. Joseph Walken, FrontStretch.com. What's your message for future drivers and owners about concussion prevention and awareness? You know, I don't know that um, prevention's difficult. Um, just awareness is something that I can speak on. If you're going to drive race cars for a living, it's a dangerous sport, um, and injury and all that's always a possibility. Um, the only thing that I can say is that with, uh, if you feel, I mean, you, there's no, um, there's no real, it's not really cut and dried. <clears throat> Let me try to explain this. So <clears throat> when I was in my twenties and I'd, you know, get a concussion, I didn't know I had one. Uh, but as you get older, for whatever reason, your body's easier for you to understand. And when you have injury in your 30s or 40s, it's just you know your body so well at that point that it's obvious that there's an issue. <clears throat> when you're in your 20s, you don't know exactly um, the, the feeling that you have and, and how, how that works. It's, it's not as obvious to you. But so... The only thing that I can say is if you do if you do have a sensation that something's not right that you need to put yourself in front of somebody who can help you and <clears throat> the biggest mistake you can make is to ignore it and push through and uh, you know because 
uh, those things can add up and, and create serious, serious issues for you down the road if you're not taking care of them individually. Um, so, I mean, the attitude for a lot of years and even today with a lot of people, I think, is to try to push through it. And um, I think that that's, you know, what's got to change is people need to start taking it a little more seriously and trying to, you know, take better care of themselves for the long term. So that's probably the things that the, the, the mistakes that I made, I think, or that I didn't, I didn't flag you know, those, those issues and say, you know, I need to get myself in front of a doctor and it, and it caught up with me. So, you know, I'd hate to, you know, I think that's something that I can share with other people and other drivers about not making those mistakes. We'll stay over here to the right and then we'll go to Reed. Julia PK from motorsport.com. Dale, as you look back at, on such a successful and accomplished career, is there anything that stands out to you in particular that maybe you would have done differently? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you change something, it's like a domino effect. No more telling what it, what else it might alter. But um, I said this before. I think that I wish I'd have known when I was. I wish I'd have known from probably 2000 or maybe even 1998, all the way up until around the time that I went to Rick's to work. So I learned so much as a, I learned so much at Rick's about um, being an asset to your team, being accountable, being available for your for your crew chief, being being a good you know being more than just holding the steering wheel and driving the car. <clears throat> when I was racing for uh, my family, I took a lot of took advantage and and didn't take it seriously. And uh, I re I mean, there were days when I would come into the garage to practice and everybody's in their cars pulling out of their stalls and I'm just walking in. Um, and nothing was wrong with that, you know, in my mind. That's ridiculous. I mean, that's crazy. Uh, I, I mean, you'd be fired, you know, in this day and time if a driver was that carefree about it and didn't matter, you know, didn't seem to matter. Um, you know, as soon as practice was over, I'd sit in a, I'd go sit in the truck, and if you know, if Tony Jr. and Tony Senior hadn't asked me a question in five or ten minutes, I'd run. I was in the bus playing video games, uh, you know, for as long as I could. I was up till two in the morning playing video games on Friday and Saturday nights. You know, just had no idea how to um, take advantage of the opportunity that I was given. And I wish I know, I don't know really how I'm, I'm sure I could have accomplished so much more if I had been plugged in, but I didn't learn how to do that until I came to work at Rick's and, uh, Steve Latart, he said, man, you're going to be in the holler an hour, 30 minutes before practice. I was like, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, there was a lot of those, there's a lot of these like rules and I learned uh, I learned right then that um, that I needed to be held accountable and that when I was you know I I performed and and things there were be there were better results you know and uh, so uh, you know I think that it was a different time back then when I was racing that bud car but if I had taken it if I had taken it as serious as I did those these last several years of my career, I'm sure there would have been some better results, and I'm sure that um, you know we had a lot of fun. And 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 <clears throat> far as I know, you know, really didn't it, it, it didn't drive under Tony Senior or Tony Junior's skin too bad about the way I was, but it's just it's really two completely different extremes from driving from the person I was then to the person I became racing at Rick's being around uh, Jimmy and Jeff sort of <clears throat> um, emulating their their work ethic and their folk I mean I, I had to be I had to work like Jimmy and Jeff they they would call you out you know if you weren't as focused and that was how a driver it Hendrick was supposed to be. He was volunteering to go test. Now, I never volunteered to go test anywhere. 
but you wanted to be the company guy. You wanted to do whatever it was that would help the company. And, um, man, that was a, I'm, you know, I'm fortunate to have had the opportunity to go work there and, and, and learn that. But had I been able to apply that to my, the first half of my career, I, I would have liked to have seen what difference that might have made. We're going to go to the left to read and finish up here with Holly. Respect NASCAR. With everything else you've got going on, you've got three drivers running for the Xfinity yeah. Championship tomorrow. And more than anything, that's emblematic of your legacy in the sport as well. Um, are you going to have time to enjoy that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I will have, we have a debrief uh, with the with the drivers and the crew chiefs after our final practice, and I want to be in there for that. Uh, traditionally, that starts right around the same time the Xfinity race starts, so I miss the first several laps of the Xfinity race due to that debrief. But since it's my, you know, my last race, I think I want to be in the debrief. And uh, I'll get a headset and come out to pit road and sit on the pit wall and watch the Xfinity race unfold. But it's, um, it's really a proud moment um, for all of us, my sister and, and everybody at Junior Roger Schwartz to have the opportunity to be here at the final race, racing for a championship, whether it's one, gar one car or three or four. Um, there's a lot of pride in that. I was, we, we came close last year and even when the checkered flag fell, the pride in my heart was the same as it was on the first lap. I was just thought it was so special to be there. I remember when we came here and ran our first Xfinity race for Junior Motorsports with Mark McFarlane, and we were kind of a patchwork of a ragtag crew, and we ran 20th all night, and we thought it was so awesome just to be there. We were so proud to be in the race and just be competing. There goes our car, you know. It was awesome. And uh, so to, I don't take that for granted, and, and I know how hard it is to be good and be competitive, and uh, so there's a lot of pride that we're even in the position to, for, to win a championship. Um, Hemrick is a worthy opponent, you know, and I know RCR will pull out everything they have to give him the best opportunity. Um, so looking forward to it. I'm going to finish up right up front here with Holly. Hi, Dale. NASCAR.com. I wonder if you're going to be in for your final race. I know last year you had the team Jeff and Tony have different oh. people that came. Can you tell me a bit about who's going to be here? You met my uh, sister and her husband, LW, my mom and her husband, Willie, uh, Mike Davis, and my best friend and property manager, Sonny, and my, his wife, my cousin, Stacy. Am I forgetting anybody? Is that it, Tony? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I figured it was a very difficult decision. It was very difficult to know what was the right thing to do there. I've got a hundred friends that I wish I could would charter a giant plane to bring them all down here. But I assumed that if they wanted to be here, they'd get here. Um, I'd be happy to help them get a ticket and get into the race but I I just it once you once you kind of start that uh, you start that a action of of getting you know helping one person it's you feel like God I gotta get this get you know the list just goes and goes um, and yeah so if people whoever wants to be here wants to come come on down but I just made sure that my you know my family's here and my mom I want my mom to be here, you know. My sister will be here because of the Xfinity opportunity we have tomorrow. And uh, so we just had a few seats on our plane. See, so my plane uh, brought us to Key West and then went home. And we drove up here so the plane can fly down Sunday with a few people on it. And it's got nine seats, and it'll bring a handful of people, and we'll go home. Dale, thanks for joining Thank us today, and good luck this weekend. Enjoy your week.